Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more or hire us to do it for you. Let us focus on what we do best so you can stay focused on what you do best. Find all of our options under services, one-to-one training, subscription-based training, or accounting and business consulting. Reconcile PayPal lightning fast with a pivot table. I've been, it seems I've been on a mission for a while now to find the, the, the way to reconcile PayPal quickly. PayPal used to be a total nightmare to reconcile. There was no statement. You had to just download the activity, and then you had to weed out things that didn't post versus things that did. Then they came out with a statement, and the first versions of the statement were eh. They were just okay. Um, but now the statements work really well. They only show you things that post. Uh, and then the only thing you have to deal with that's maybe a little complex are the holds. But when you see today's process, you're going to see how easy it is even to deal with that part. So let's get into this. Here is a real live PayPal statement for me from May of 2018. And uh, as you can see, I don't keep a lot of money in there. So let's go reconcile PayPal for this month, the ending balance. I'm just going to be flipping back and forth uh, real quick. 652.95, and the ending date, just to confirm from the statement, is 531.18. That ending date is really important because you want to make sure you cut off anything that may be in QuickBooks subsequent to that date. So it's really important. If you a lot of you might just do 530 and say, ah, it's close enough. It's not. It needs to match perfectly. Let's start reconciling. Now, what I'm going to do, and I, as you can see, I've already got a bunch of stuff in here, and I'm going to uncheck it all. First, you have to select everything, then you can unselect everything. Um, part of why I have a mess in here, which I'm going to clean up, but I'm not going to make you go through that process with me, is I had the app installed, and I was playing with it and using it, and the problem is what you see here. I have the gross amount, and then I have the fee in two separate transactions, but that's not how it comes out in PayPal. In PayPal, it's one transaction, gross 97, fee 311, net, whatever that comes out to. I'm not that good with numbers. Anyway. So I'm going to show you how to do this, and I'm going to—I'm not like I said. I'm just going to show you how to set up the uh, the the monthly statement that you can get from PayPal in CSV format, so that we can uh, so that we can do this quickly. You're going to focus on one thing at a time. So if we focus on deposits, then we're focusing on just the um, the money in part, right? And then we're going to sort it by payee, and you're going to see how this is going to become incredibly useful. Another thing I do as I'm doing this is I clean up my data. So if I have customers that got pushed in from my shopping cart where I have maybe a duplicate of a customer, I don't have all the information, I sort of take advantage of the opportunity while it's right in front of me to update the customer's profile, so to speak, in QuickBooks Online. So let's go over to the CSV file. This is the file in the exact form in which you download it when you download the monthly statement from PayPal. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to save it as an Excel file. So file save as, because as soon as you start doing anything like formatting or anything like that, if you don't remember to save it as an Excel file, as a CSV, you will lose all of that, right? So notice I'm just keeping the same naming convention. Okay, now let's do some quick formatting on this. I'm going to bold my headers. Actually, I take that back. Let's not bold the headers. Uh, I want to take my dates. Control in the number one gets my format dialog. Let's get those to look like dates. Let's get my... Uh, financial information to look like financial information. I like the uh, comma-based formatting. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn this whole thing into a table. So I'm starting at A1 where the date header descript descriptor is. Control shift right arrow, control shift down arrow. Highlights the entire set of data all the way across, all the way down. And we're going to, I'm in the home tab here, and we're going to format this as a table. Shout out to my good friend Matthew Fulton from Parkway Business Solutions and Vendors Sync. He's the one who convinced me to use tables a lot. So choose your poison, pick whichever color scheme you like, and just click OK. Obviously, that part is not critical. And I'm going to highlight the whole thing and double click the right extreme between any two columns in order to widen up the columns so that they are as wide as I need to be. One thing notice turning it into a table does is I don't have to worry about freezing panes or anything like that. Notice as I scroll down to where I can't see the headers anymore, it turns my column references, which are normally letters, into the descriptions from the header line. So the tables make Excel kind of, it, it makes Excel start to get pretty smart. Another thing you can do, notice it turns the filters on. So if I want to figure out whether the holds zero out perfectly or not, I can go into my description filter and type the word hold. And it gets me the holds and the reverses of the holds because that word appears in both descriptions, whichever way it's going. So I can click OK. 
and then on the net I'm going to highlight all the way down and just confirm at the bottom here that the sum is zero. As long as I know that's the case, I know I don't have to worry about holds. All the holds that were taken out were also reversed during the same period, so I don't have to deal with them. If I did want to, I could import these both, run them through a PayPal holds clearing, and know that they would all zero out. But it isn't necessary, so I just saved myself from, some, uh, from doing some extra work. So over here, back to data, I'm going to hit clear for the filters, so it, it resets the filters. Now let's get this cut up like a, like a statement, but this time we're going to use pivot tables. And I say this time because previously in a QuickBooks Connect in 2018, I actually demonstrated a way of doing this where you made multiple copies of tabs and you sorted and cut. It's so much faster with a pivot table as you're now about to see. So uh, I'm going to click insert, pivot table, and because I've established the data table, it's definitely going to be smart. It knows the whole range is table one. So that also eliminates any confusion or question, right? Now, for the values, we want gross fee and net all in one. So I'm going to say gross, I'm going to say fee, and I'm going to say net. And then we want to do a little bit of formatting. So I'm going to click on sum of gross and go to value field settings, number format, number and whatever your uh, pr preferred method of showing a negative number, uh, you can choose and then click OK. We're going to do the same with the fee. And I encourage you, of course, to just be consistent here. Use the same formatting for all three. OK, so now I've got everything. Uh, summed for everything, right? The total gross. If I go back to the original data and I sum up the gross amounts, remember some are positive, some are negative. I can highlight the whole range and sure enough, it totals to 867.70. So you can sort of check your work that way. The fees, the net, of course, would also work. Now I want to figure out a way to cut this up and make it a little more meaningful. So in PayPal, I have the name and that's how I want to do it. So I drag the name into the rows, right? And now I've got a list of everything sort of grouped by name. So I have both customers and vendors in here. So the next step is how we now distinguish. Let's say we want to make this one money in, right? Because that's what I said we'd start with in QBO. So I want to apply a value filter. So over here under row labels, I'm going to click this drop down. We're going to go to value filters and we're going to say greater than zero. So now it's only including money in. Bear in mind, this includes refunds, even though refunds would be money out. It includes refunds because it's tied to the customer name here. And so a refund, you'll just see the net of the refunds and all the income for that particular customer. But now all I have to do is go back over to QBO and I'm sorted by payee. Notice this is already sorted by payee, but if you're not sure or want to make sure, you can click the filter there and make sure it's sorted A to Z. Let's go back over to QBO, and you can see a bigger bottom line, one of my good customers here, shows up right there and it lines up perfectly. Now, I'll be honest, originally when I started doing this, it didn't say a bigger bottom line. I had to go look the person up by name, but that's what I was talking about. I cleaned the data. I went into QBO and I updated the customer's name so that I would see everything, so that it would be really clear what's a match, right? The next one is... Um, is not readily here, so I, again, that's where I have to do a little data cleaning. But you get the idea. This is going to make it incredibly easy now to reconcile. There she is, 2397, 2397. I know I can check that amount off. Now, in some cases, you'll have multiple transactions possibly for the same person. So in a case like that, what you can do is you can take the date and drag it below the name. And that way you can see each individual transaction for that particular name during that month. Here's a good example where my friend Billy Ann Grigg was paying for several subscribers, two of which were a $25 monthly subscription that happened to hit on the same day. She signed up two people in one day. So keep in mind that when you're reconciling, you have to take this into consideration. I got to match up by the individual amounts. But bottom line here is I know that it's going to be four times $23.97 for her. And here she is, one, two... I hate when QBO does that. One, two, three, four, and I have Andrea's up there. So these are all good to go, right? This one I have to find. She's actually there by her business name, I happen to know. So I have to go back and edit the name in QBO so that that appears first. Um, 
Now let's take a quick look at the payments or the money out. So how do we get the money out out of the pivot table? Simple. Let's make a duplicate of money in. And I taught this at QuickBooks Connect. Control, hold down the control key, click on the tab and drag to the right. And it makes an exact duplicate. This is gonna be money out. And all I need to do here is, let's get the dates out of the uh, pivot table here. And now I wanna change my value filter. So instead of greater than, I need less than zero. Boom, and now I have all the payees that I've paid, DocuSign I paid a bunch of money to, and all this. So these should match up perfectly when I sort by payee on payments. And see, again, I have fees in here from customers. This is the mess that it creates when you use the, uh, the PayPal uh, it, a download feature in QBO. Just don't do it. You're so much better importing it with SASANT, which is another video for another day. I also demonstrated it at uh, QuickBooks Connect. So uh, if you need help with that, reach out to me. I can show you exactly how you can get your stuff imported from PayPal super fast. Um, but we want to find a DocuSign. So again, it's alphabetical. Should be in here. Um, and it may be in here without a payee name. And by the way, this is where you can also use your browser search function, control F, docu, and it's not finding it. So it may be that this transaction never made it in here, which means I'll just have to add it, right? Uh, elegant themes, Fastspring, I know I saw in there. There's Fastspring for my 49 bucks. Um, so anyway, like I said, you, you're going to need to clean up your data somewhat and make sure your payees here in QBO kind of match up with the way they show up in PayPal. And the way to do that sometimes is to create kind of a mixture uh, in the display name on something. So if, if in QBO I have it by an individual's name, but PayPal downloads a business, then what I'll do is I'll go into that name in QBO and I'll put both pieces of information in there. So if I go into, uh, let's see, let's use uh, the sales example, customers. And I'll use my friend Andrea as the example. That's what I did with her. I, I put it in as the business name dash her name so that uh, it would be very easy to identify when I'm reconciling with QuickBooks Online. It takes a little bit of work up front, but totally worth it in the long run because as you clean this stuff, pretty much most months you deal with the same people. So you clean up one month, you've cleaned up most months, and it just gets easier and easier and faster and faster as you go. And then you have really good information. You have really good data that you can pull out of either PayPal or QuickBooks Online because one thing I know I like to do periodically is go through especially past transactions from my customers and see who's not in a subscription anymore and maybe reach out to them and get some feedback feedback and see what they would like to see more of, what might make them want to come back, those kinds of things. The best way to drive innovation is by talking to your customers. I learned that from our friends at Intuit a long time ago, is uh, they innovate based on getting feedback from their customers directly and find out what their customers want. They even go and look over people's shoulders to see how they're working with their products to see what things people might get stuck on and where they might be able to improve things on the very specific basis of seeing how people are interacting. So I want to do the same, my version of that. I want to do the same thing. So that, my friends, is how to reconcile PayPal lightning fast. I've given you the tools. Now you just have to get into it and do the work. As always, if you have any questions, reach out to me. You have my information on the website, my email, seth at nerdenterprises.com. Give us a call, 866-945-8070, and I'll be happy to work with you, talk to you, help you, sign up for some sessions with me, or uh, maybe you want me to just do it for you. So outsource your work to us, and we can take care of it for you. Looking forward to talking to you one way or the other. As always, I hope you learned something here and had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.